So how advanced are you in preparation towards that seminar? Uh, it is March first week, that means two third of the semester is practically over, or at least half. So have you already completed your literature survey? No. <coughs> have you started? Ah, not bad. So, uh, uh, someone who said yes, uh, can you define what exactly have you done when you say you have started? Somebody? Okay, how many of you have started working on your seminar? Are, are we, there was a loud yes. <laughs> okay, so the last man, can you tell us what exactly you have done so far? So you have read, you said you have read many research papers. He says he has read many research papers in the key areas of research. Uh, can you define many? I mean, there's one, two, three, infinity, <laughs> if you if you know. One, two, three, infinity was a book in my childhood. By the way, although I am having a dialogue with him, please consider this discussion to be generic enough because this happens with all of us and that's the point I wanted to make. So how did you pick up these four papers? A, the guy told you that these are the references you should read. B, you searched. So to start your literature survey, a good starting point is your guide tells you that look, there is a lot of literature here. This is one paper which can be the starting point. So you read that research paper. Uh, whether you understand that research paper completely or not is not very relevant, but you should understand the gist of what that paper says. But more importantly, that paper would in turn have a whole lot of references. Now how many references did that paper have? 35 references, and yet you choose only three of these. So, no, that is okay, but how did you choose these three? So, only about 12 are relevant, yet you chose to study three. So, was the choice decided by the fact that these three were easily available on the net or in the library? No. So, how, okay, let's take some other case study from this side. So how many of you have started working towards your seminars? One, two. I, this is very funny, you know, initially when I asked, there were about uh, 50 hands raised. Now, when uh, I am asking you to define what do you mean by having started, now suddenly only one or two, there is a confident hand at the back. Yeah, topic is answer extraction from query. You might help our friend there who went just by the three top searches. So depends on what query he asked, maybe, or he just l looked at those references, whatever. But can you elaborate? So uh, did you also get a list of papers from your guide to look at? So how many references were there in each of the two papers? One, five. In each, how many overlapping? So 15 plus 15 instead of 30, they were 20 or 25. So you had a total of 22 references. Now did you search for all of them? So how many papers did you actually look at? You selected 10 more or less looking at the title, deciding that this would become, uh, this would be. 
Okay. So these 10 papers have you studied or you are still in the process of studying them? So you read abstracts and decided that 4 to 5 are not relevant. About, so the remaining 5 are relevant. So now have you read these 5 or you are in the process of reading them? Out of 5 you have read 2. You found them to be relevant? Okay. Uh, would you agree friends that in general, if I as an MTech or PhD student approach the initial job of literature survey, more or less I would tend to do one of these two things or something similar to this? Okay. There is nothing wrong in this. In fact, when you listen to Professor Sahanamurti's talk, uh, the first talk is actually important because it tells you how to read a research paper. And the talk certainly does not suggest that you should read only abstract and conclusion. I have underlined three things here. This is the third one. Title, abstracts and conclusion. You might not all say this explicitly, but roughly these are the three things that anybody will first look at. What should it tell us is that when we write the title of our seminar report, when we write the abstract, and when we write the conclusions, how careful we have to be. In my experience of 40 years, whether it is seminar report or MTech stage one, stage two report, the meat of the report is always ready. <coughs> it goes through some iterations at least. The abstract and conclusion, nobody writes till end. And that gets written hurriedly. Forget the English language mistakes so creep in, but the abstract and the conclusions often do not capture the essence of the work. And the reason is not that you are not aware of those, but the fact that you did not plan to give adequate time to write these two things. These are the smallest paragraphs in the entire report, you will agree. <coughs> and they are the most difficult to write. I don't know whether I said this, but Professor uh, Prakash Vaidya wrote a uh, uh, message on my uh, board when he saw a very long mail I had sent to someone. He says, I wanted to write a short letter, but I did not have time, so I wrote a long one. Do you realize the, the funny thing in this? This is a fact. Writing something short, like you wrote the summary and critique, it would have taken you longer than if you were to write it as a story. Okay. So this happens. But please remember that since the whole world, like you, will concentrate <coughs> on looking at the title, on the abstract, and on the conclusions, you better write them well. Okay. Having said this, what is the record that you have kept of the papers which you have read, not referred to in your report that will come later? What is the written record that you have? You have downloaded those papers. You have access to full papers. You have obviously not read full papers. Suppose later on you decide to choose one paper as our friend seems to have done for a few, two papers maybe you have read and they may get referred to, cited in his uh, reference, in, in his seminar report. Okay. How long will it take physical time to describe the citation correctly in his own section on references and bibliography? Should be 30 seconds at the time when you are submitting your report or wanting to submit your report. Please understand what I am saying. You have written the uh, complete seminar report or the stage one report and you are compiling the bibliography or you are compiling the references at the end. You have cited them somewhere appropriately while writing the thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you have to write. Appears to be the extremely <coughs> silly activity. It, it should be done just like that. It indeed gets done just like that. Meaning, the details which are required in the citation are rarely complete in each and every reference. So how many of you are familiar with the citation rules which are followed 
let's say in either IEEE or ACM or Department of Computer Science Standards. How many of you have read the specifications of writing a seminar report or writing a uh, uh, MTech stage one report? Is it available in the department? Yeah. You read that? One person. Why? Okay. So let me explain why. I would also probably do the same thing. And that is based on the mistaken assumption that first I have to complete my work, then only I will start writing it. And when I start writing it, I will bother about the format. Is that right? Because the writing stage has not yet come. That is where the problem is. After I complete my work, then I forget that I have forgotten to, I forget that I have forgotten to see that description. Therefore, I start writing. And then just few days before, either a colleague of mine or my guide tells me, Away, Lalu, this is not as per the departmental format, you will have to write it like that. And then I go back there. And then I suddenly find, amongst other things, that references have to be written in a specific fashion. So, since you have read that, can you tell us exactly how a reference is cited, if you recall that? Okay. Number of chapters or sections or whatever. But you do not know how, for example, if <coughs> in some text, I have said, let us say, uh, uh, the such is a sentence which appears in my writer. The book by Devs. Devs is the Chancellor of Berkeley University. Those of you have heard him. He's written an extremely interesting book on how the, uh, he calls it the scandal in India and the building of the British Empire. It's a very interesting book, but forget that. <coughs> so I've given this reference. Now somewhere in my last portion of my report, I will be writing references and I will be writing one, two, three, four, like this. Where I have used one, two, three, four as citation. I could use the year of publication, some short name there, and I'll arrange these on alphabetical order or whatever, or order of appearance or order of uh, appearance in my report or order of appearance in the literature, either. The small point I'm saying is, how do I write, what do I write here? You have read research papers, some. You have read references apparently, because from the reference only you find another reference. Okay. How many of you remember how exactly was that reference written in any other paper? No, you have, you, you seem to be much familiar with this. Let's, let's understand from, yeah. Uh, a writer could title of the research paper. Okay. And the uh, name of the author. So one is title then name of the author. Is that correct? Uh, no, no, no. Is this sequence correct? Do the authors come first or do the title come first? Okay. So there is a convention. It doesn't matter which way you write in one way. But since there is a convention, that needs to be followed. And that needs to be understood and appreciated. So it has to sink in our minds. Actually, any time either I am quoting a reference or I am reading a reference, 
without somebody telling me that this is author, this is title, I should automatically see that. That's the advantage of everybody following that convention. All right. So, is there a general agreement that the names of the names of the author should come before the title? Okay. Then title. Next. So, uh, publication, I will say. Ah, sometimes year and place is also written. It is not optional. It is not optional. If the year of publication or time of publication is not written, it's an academic crime. Crime, do you understand? Crime. So, if you find a reference like that, somebody has been as sloppy as we generally are. Why is it relevant? Because that date of publication tells me whether this material belongs to a time period before much of the work happened or it belongs to a latest occurrence or it is somewhere in between. That, that year immediately gives me a signal in my mind about the relevance of that work, unless it is a very old paper, but a seminal paper. A seminal paper is one which has maximum impact on the field. It starts a new theme somewhere. Then such papers could be 1500, 1600, 1700, it does not matter. In fact, if a very old paper is cited in the literature, you can actually assume that to be a seminal paper. So, the year of publication is not sometimes written. Many of you might have this. Uh, this notion. It is, it is always to be time. So, and if it is a conference, then usually if it is one of the recent conferences or whatever, you generally also write the month. If it is a journal publication, you write the issue number, volume. Okay. What else? If it is a printed publication, it is common to write page numbers. If it is a book, you may say just chapter or section or whatever. <coughs> is only the name of the publication written or publisher is also written? Okay, good. So, enough details about it. Anything else? Sorry? So, can you explain what is the DOI number? So, it tells you what? There could be other numbers such as ISBN, there could be other classifications. The moral of this entire long story is that this entire thing you would expect to find in any reference. Obviously, therefore, this entire thing in a suitable format has to be written by you in the references that you list. Agreed? Now, the main question. When you read those papers, any one single paper also, do you always note down these details about that paper? Note down or type somewhere. You do not. Take it from me, you do not. I did not when I was a student till my research guide fired me once. In those days, there were no computers. We used to have index pages. We had to carry those index pages to library. And I used to carry a notebook. He took that notebook and kept it with him and gave me a set of index pages. And he says, Deepak, this is how you will write the literature that you survey. So it would have exactly these things. I am talking about 1972-73. I had to write these and I had to read the index card was a sort of page full of things. I had to write the complete abstract that was written there by my own hands. The advantage he mentioned, I said, I'm reading it, so I understand it. He says, no, you should write it down because you should read and write and that goes into your mind. So, you'll remember the abstract, the gist of the abstract practically forever. 
and since you have written the name of the author, the name of the journal, etc., etc., your mind can correlate the occurrence of that name and that abstract much later as well. This is the discipline that was there. You have now computers. So what happens is you have access to information very easily. But because you have access to information, you have perhaps forgotten to organize that information properly as you deal with it. Because later on you will have to spend much more time in relooking. Please understand that the reference to a paper cannot easily be constructed from the paper itself. If you have downloaded a research publication, it will of course have the title, it will have authors. Where will you find where this paper was published? <coughs> in some papers, you would find it in the bottom line, IEEE, journal, whatever, whatever. But in some papers on the web, you won't find that reference. If it's a manuscript submitted, you won't find any reference at all. Will you find the year, the publisher, the conference, where it was held, the month, the page number of the proceeding? You may not find that, even though you have a full paper with you. So to assume that I have these 20 papers downloaded with me, which I have used in my research, and therefore in my report, I can easily cite them, is an incorrect notion. Believe me, when you have three days to submit your report, you have these 20 papers with you, but your reference page will look obnoxiously bad. You may wonder why I'm spending so much time on such a small thing. These small things together make the big hole. And I'm mentioning that small thing which ordinarily is left out by you. Most of the other things you would be capable of looking at, writing, where looking at how to write properly, etc., in a separate issue. So will you please do that now, before it is too late, whatever papers you have studied, okay? I still feel that, uh, although I also use computers as heavily as you do now, but I still feel like writing down a few lines on a page. Yeah, I may not refer to that page later, but I have found that the act of writing enforces uh, memory to some extent. But of course, different people would have different style. In any case, whether on a computer or elsewhere, there is absolutely no excuse for all of you not to have this information about each and every paper that you read collated separately and kept separately as a growing list, as a growing list. Then you can pick up whichever you want later. And it would be nice if you could link those to the abstracts. Please understand that if you have downloaded papers, you have downloaded what, maybe 20 papers as someone said, these 20 papers will exist as 20 different files. Now I want to quickly peruse the abstracts of these 20 papers. I will have no way out except to open each file, look at the abstract, keep it in mind, close it, open another file, look at the abstract, etc. right? Don't you think it would be useful if these 20 abstracts were just cut and pasted in a single file with these kind of references? So what I was told to do by hand in those days, you can automate that process to some extent and create a single document, which is some kind of a reference sheet for you, which would contain the reference in exactly this fashion, and just below it, it will contain the abstract, which is there from the thing. And now you would have all the abstracts there. And I would recommend one more thing. When you write the list of such 20 abstracts or 30 abstracts, you might want to put some keywords. Many times you will find the keywords as a requirement in most of the recent publications. Earlier publications did not have that. And these keywords need not be the standard keywords which are published, but the keywords which pertain to your work. So you are looking at let's say some broad area and you have some uh, four, five or six attributes around which you want to hunt for the research papers, then along with the reference, you might just write this keyword, this keyword, this keyword. So that for you, the quick search is better. In general, as somebody pursuing PhD who is supposed to do a much more exhaustive literature survey, he might, he or she might read some hundred abstracts before coming down. And remember, as the number increases beyond five, its organization becomes difficult. 
So I would suggest that you should do that. In any case, the point is that you must write the references correctly and you cannot do that easily at the end unless you have noted them down in the first place. Now, this is an exercise that I would like you to do. Uh, uh, <coughs> I'll be discussing with Professor Prakash Vaidya the work that you will do in the next two lectures because next two lectures I'm not here, I'm in Berkeley attending a conference online education. So Professor Prakash Vaidya will handle some assignments. But one assignment which I would like you to do, which is strictly pertaining to your own uh, literature survey related activities for your own uh, seminar. Okay, how many of you are not doing a seminar this semester? Oh, not doing a seminar. Uh, are you doing any other formal activity like some uh, R&D project or stage one or, or something like that? Is there any other formal thing? Nothing. Oh, so you don't have to write anything in this whole semester except the exams, is it? Ah, very, uh, what should I say, fortunate lot. They don't have any work. Uh, so how do we go about it then? Because uh, this activity that I'm going to suggest pertains to the literature survey. If you're not required to do any literature survey, all right. I will give you a task that will be actually longer than the, that will take longer than the other people. Uh, do a literature survey on MOOCs. How many of you are not doing any seminar? Can you raise hands again? One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and approximately 5 more from those who are absent, right? It's about 20 people. I would not like you to waste a lot of your time, not like you to waste your lot of time, but if each one of you can just glance through the books, please remember, I am not specifying any special activity or concentration. MOOCs is massive open online courses. So whatever material you come to your mind, do a blind search. But each one of you get down some four or five references, okay? And just glance through those abstracts, okay? And write one or two keywords, but write the references properly. Just this task. Nothing else. You are not required to study those papers thoroughly or something like that, okay? If you can actually download cut and paste abstracts and form a glowing list, I'll be thankful you will benefit from that. This is a method. Okay. And these 20 people could form a group. Could somebody offer to coordinate activities of this group? Somebody who is not uh, very uh, heavily loaded this semester? No, coordination is difficult. Firuza, can you coordinate them? All right, so all such people, please send an email to her. She will make a group of all those people on the Moodle and then she will make a sort of submission thing where you can just upload it and she will go on it. So let us, these 20 of us, let us undertake an exercise of doing a literature survey ourselves and using that to explain to our other colleagues in the class how good literature survey is done and reported. Would we like to take that challenge? None of you will have to do anything. You will have to only look at the references cut and paste the abstracts, write the references properly and submit your task sheets. Then Firuza and I will do the literature survey. And we will present that literature survey to everyone. How do you like that idea? When I say Firuza and I will do the literature survey, it actually means she will do the literature survey and I will take part of the credit. <laughs> you agree, Firuza? Fine. So this is what we will do now. Uh, I, I need to leave now because I have, but I will request Professor uh, uh, Prakash Vaidya to just try and outline the kind of activities of correction work that is going to be, you have done some correction work for their submissions. So uh, that statistics would you like to present today or next lecture? Next lecture, okay. No, in that case, <coughs> let us use these, uh, I, there, is a, there has been a mishap in the family and I have to rush to Pune, but we still have about 
10 more minutes, 12 more minutes. So let us spend these 12 more minutes in listening to your endeavors in technical communication. Now we are coming to technical communication, not generic communication. So any questions or any doubts that you have or any comment that you would like to make on effective communication from your side? Communicate. See, when I ah. Oh, so he is telling you roughly the same thing that I am suggesting. Okay. Is there a methodology that you use in creating the Google Doc? So, there is a table containing the title and the reference and stuff, and then there is a softening to that, a softening to page in bottom line, the relevant stuff is written. So, first thing is plan that list, and later if I want to read that. So, this, this is a good technique. He is suggesting that create a Google Doc. An advantage of Google Doc is you can also share it with people. So, well, things become automatic. It's a good point. Anything else that somebody would like to observe? He seems to have done something concrete so far towards his uh, seminar, whereas others uh, appear to have, uh, appear to be claiming that they have started. Am I right? I must, of course, I have nothing to do with your research seminars, your guides, and you are capable of handling that. But as it occurs to an outsider, let me suggest to you very politely that the semester started in the first week of January and we are in the first week of March. Two full months have gone and the month of April, half of it at least is NSEM exams. What is your uh, submission date for seminars? Ah, now I understand. You are all waiting for the department to announce the submission date. Then the activity will start. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, how, how like a typical IITN? The life has not changed in 45 years that I can remember, so that's okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, but I would, I would suggest that you need not wait for such an announcement, at least start now. Because independent of what you do in your seminar, your assignment submissions here depend very much on your working on your research seminar. You won't be able to submit the assignments here properly unless you work. Okay. So one assignment is going to be, I, as I said, I will provide the links, so we will not waste the lecture times in uh, 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 listening to Professor Sahanamurti, but you should listen to her lectures outside. There are two lectures, as I said, one on how to read a research paper and second on how to uh, conduct a literature survey. Both these lectures, in my opinion, are good for you at this juncture itself, since many of you have not started on it. So those links will be put up uh, by tonight or tomorrow morning, because I'll be back only late night. So tomorrow morning, first thing will be there. Right. The third set of lectures I would like you to look at those of you who are serious about it is there are lectures <coughs> did I mention these lectures earlier in the course no Professor Sripath Karmalkar is a professor of electrical engineering at IIT Madras and for several years he has been giving talks on how to do research. We had invited him, Professor Sachin Patwardhan of uh, chemical engineering uh, had invited him here to talk to our research scholars. How many of you are uh, research scholars, PhD students here? A large number. So all of you have seen these lectures or no? You are not. Okay. Those were absolutely extraordinary lectures covering all topics of introduction to research. How to do research, what kind of problems you face, how to do rigorous experimentation, how to resolve arguments and fights between you and your guide, how to resolve depression issues, all kinds of things. Excellent lectures. 
So, <coughs> I had got those lectures recorded then and requested him whether he could release them in open source, he agreed. Later on, we conducted a program for 10,000 teachers, training them on to research methodology, introduction to research methodology. And we again invited Professor Karmarkar to come and repeat those six lectures. Because teachers in engineering colleges, you would know, you would, many of you would come from large number of engineering colleges where not all teachers have done PhD. Many, in fact, are actually registered and working. So to introduce them to research, we had organized this course. And all those lectures now are recorded, proper videos, and those videos exist on the NME ICT website. So remember to include that website also, okay? The reference to that. Those lectures are downloadable, so you can download them. They are released in open source, and you can actually listen. I would strongly suggest that all research scholars would find it very, very useful to listen to his lectures. There's a complete course of many uh, two weeks and a lot of other lectures uh, by other people, but his lectures, and the introduction to research lectures, I think there are five or six lectures, They're absolutely top class and very useful. And I would suggest that even for MTech students who actually at the end of first year are getting into the beginning of their research because your research project will start now, might find it useful. Some of you who have time might just listen to them now. Some of you who do not have time now might listen to them in May, June when you actually start your project. So that you will find very useful. Professor Sripath Karmarkar. So both these uh, uh, links you will keep there. Okay. Any other query or observation? Nobody has a question on effective communication. Okay, some observation, some comment. So I'm not asking you to ask a question. Make some comment. Our uh, Your? Technically? Technically? Is statistically proven. <laughs> How do you say that? Oh, he is saying that when we have not done much work, we remain silent in the class. But when we do some work, we are uh, happy to present. You recall when I asked for submissions and then I requested for presentation, people without any hesitation came here and made presentations because they had actually worked. So what he is observing is when I have not done much work, then I hesitate in communicating. That is what he means by saying it's statistically proven. But the last five minutes, I'm not asking you to say anything about any work <coughs> that you should have done. Nothing. Just general comments on effective communication. You have no comment to make. Any weakness that you perceive, any suggestion that you have, anything. No observation. I have to, I have to pick up someone to say, okay, prodding is required. Okay, you lady, you, you say something. Whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> Whatever comes to your mind, doesn't matter. You can tell us a story, for example. No, her. She is being shy, that's why I'm, I want her to speak. <laughs> yeah? I wonder, do you hesitate so much when you are in a group and there is some, something going on and you are asked to contribute, you are asked to say something. Do you hesitate so much before opening your mouth among your friends? No. They are all your friends. You can include me in my moment. So why is it taking so long to just make any observation? Okay, you can speak on anything under the sun. And even beyond, because sun controls only this part of the solar system. <laughs> Any quick observation? Somebody, why I am I'm surprised that people hesitate in in speaking. Okay, can you say something? Yeah, you. No, no, no you only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Say something. Oh, I, I am delighted to find a human being amongst us who has nothing to say. You are so happy with the world or you are so unhappy with the world. <laughs> These two extremes. You would have something. Isn't there anybody in the class who has something to say? Yes, you would like to say something? Yeah. Sorry? Parable of K. Okay. okay. So can you just elaborate in two sentences on that? stated some very profound things about the philosophy of knowledge. How many of you have read this parable? One, two, three, four, not bad. <laughs> Come again. In the class of philosophy. Oh, the <laughs> Fine. But I, I, shouldn't we be glad that people actually remember a few things about what happens in a class? <laughs> now that is very effective communication, I would say. <laughs> okay, all right. We have one more minute. But I will tell you something. This is not on. You will have to speak. Now since you speak better, you present better when it is in the context of an assignment, please take this down as an assignment. Next two sessions, Professor Prakash Vaidya will conduct, but before that I would like you to read both the lectures by Professor Sana Murthy, you should have seen them. <coughs> but on the session on, uh, is it uh, 13th of March, right? On the 13th of March session, I'll be inviting to people to speak, I'll be selecting people randomly to speak on anything of their choice for three minutes. No slides, no write-up, no nothing. They'll have to speak. Three minutes. And I will choose people randomly. So, <coughs> you're almost ten days to prepare on what you want to say in those three minutes. Completely open-ended. You can tell a short story. Okay. The only thing you're not permitted to do is come here and stand like this for three minutes without speaking. You will have to speak. Is that okay with you? Fine. So that's an assignment. Prepare for it. Thank you so much.